In this video, we discuss 15 touch bar tips and tricks. The first tip is an obvious one, how to show your function keys on the touch bar. To do so, all you need to do is hold the function key in the bottom left hand corner of the hardware keyboard, and that will reveal the function keys in the touch bar. Now, what if you always wanna display function keys for a particular app? Just go to System Preferences, Keyboard, Shortcuts, and then click the Function Keys section, and then click the plus button to add an app. And once you select your app, you're gonna notice that the function keys are displayed in the touch bar instead of anything else. All right, so we're gonna select Terminal here, and then click Add. And now we'll open up the Terminal app, and watch what happens. You see that? It displays the 12 function keys in the touch bar. And if you hold the function key on your keyboard, the touch bar will display system functions from the control strip. One of the cool things about the touch bar is it allows you to quickly adjust your volume and brightness by using sliders. But you don't need to tap and then use a slider. You can actually do it in one fell swoop, one gesture, just tap and slide. And then you will notice that a slider automatically appears. So again, let me show you how it works. Just tap and slide instantly like that. Super simple, super easy. One more time, tap, slide, you got it. Now the control strip is that section on the right side of the touch bar and you can actually customize that by opening up system preferences, going to keyboard, and then clicking where it says customize control strip. Once you do that, you'll see this little menu here and this allows you to customize the control strip. Let me show you how it's done. So first of all, you're gonna notice that your icons are wiggling in the control strip, indicating that they're ready to be edited. So you just drag down like this, any new keys that you wish to appear in the control strip. Now you can only have four items in the control strip at once. So if you put more than four keys, it will replace it, but you don't have to have four keys. You can actually remove all of the keys from the control strip if you wish to do so. Now the control strip isn't just limited to these four keys right here, but if you tap the Chevron key, it'll reveal the expanded control strip with many more options to choose from. So it really should be no surprise that you can customize the expanded control strip as well. So when you're in edit mode here, simply tap the Chevron to reveal the expanded control strip and you'll see the full gamut of customization options available to you. But customization doesn't end with a control strip. If you go to view and go to customize touch bar for a supported app, you can customize the touch bar in relation to that individual app. So in this case, I'm using Pixelmator. And as you can see, there's tons of different ways to customize Pixelmator. So I'm going to remove one of these key options here. I'm just going to drag that out. And I'm going to replace it with this, just like that. So again, the point is you can customize your apps as you see fit. Now you can also customize the control strip while you're in the middle of customizing an app. All you need to do is tap the control strip section of the touch bar, just like that. And you can go back and start customizing the app again by touching the app section, just like that. You probably noticed that the escape key and the touch bar isn't aligned with the physical keys on the keyboard. However, you don't necessarily have to touch the escape key exactly right on the key itself. You can actually touch a little bit to the left of the key, which is great for touch typists because you don't have to be perfect to hit the escape key. Now the touch bar will go to sleep after 75 seconds of no activity. After 60 seconds, you'll notice it dim like this, like this, like this. There we go. Okay, so it dimmed. So you have 15 additional seconds before the touch bar goes to sleep completely and turns off. But the nice thing is you can wake it back up in three different ways. You can tap the touch bar itself, which I'm gonna show you right now. Go to sleep, there we go. So tap the touch bar, it wakes up. Or you can tap a key on your keyboard and it'll wake up. Or you can tap the trackpad and it wakes up. Speaking of trackpad, you can move the touch bar individually or the trackpad individually, or you can use both simultaneously like this. And if you're running the latest Mac OS 10.12.2 public beta three or later, which is available, like I said, as a public beta, then you'll be able to take screenshots of the touch bar using a handy keyboard shortcut. Let me show you how. So just open up system preferences, go to the keyboard section under shortcuts, and then you're gonna see those two keyboard shortcuts 
Command Shift 6 will allow you to take a screenshot of the touch bar and it'll save it onto your desktop. So Command Shift 6 like that and there is the screenshot of the touch bar. Pretty nifty, wouldn't you agree? You know how on your iPhone you can hold the home button to make Siri listen to your entire command? Well, you can do the same thing on Mac OS now that there is a dedicated Siri button on the touch bar. So once we're finished with our command, release the Siri key and Siri takes over from there. This is a really cool feature, a persistent media scrubber that stays available no matter what app you're in. So you know how the touch bar dynamically switches and changes whenever you switch apps? Well, one thing that always stays constant is the media scrubber that you'll find when you're playing videos in iTunes or videos on uh, Safari or listening to music on iTunes. You have this nice scrubber. And the nice thing about this scrubber is that it's very accurate. You can scrub to like the exact time of your favorite YouTube videos. Hopefully you're subscribed to 9to5Mac's YouTube channel. But the point I'm really trying to make here is that these media controls are persistent across all apps. So even when something takes focus, like say I opened up system preferences and put it on top of the Safari window like this, Ah, you do see the media scrubber go away, but it is still there. It's just hidden in the control strip. Yes, the control strip actually gets an extra button for accessing your media controls. And you'll see an app icon of the app that is currently linked to those controls. So in this case, Safari. I can close out like that. But what if I have two apps with media content? Well, it's actually pretty simple. There's just another button to access the media controls for the other app. So in this case, iTunes. Just tap the iTunes button and I can easily control my music playback, just like that. And I can go back and switch to Safari if I wish to do so. Really handy. And lastly, what happens if you're using a touch bar enabled MacBook Pro and you have a bootcamp partition and you're running Windows? What do you see then? Well, you still do get some key controls, but they're basically just system functions like brightness for your screen and for the keyboard buttons. There's media controls there and there's volume controls as well. Of course, you also have an escape key and you can still access your function keys by holding the function key on the keyboard in the bottom left hand corner. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at some of our favorite tips and tricks for the touch bar on the latest MacBook Pro. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Also, make sure you subscribe and also give us a thumbs up if you appreciated this video or if you learned something. In the meantime, I'll be hanging down here in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.